Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts. And today, Rabbi Schneider explains why God won't ever abandon us. Our identity is often tied up in our families. But do these relationships truly encapsulate who we really are? Rabbi Schneider answers that question as he dives into scripture from 1 John and the book of Genesis. Our message is titled, Orphans No More, and we'll be looking at why we have the profound assurance of being his cherished children forever. So let's get started. God bless you and shalom, beloved ones. More than anything else, beloved one, you and I need to know Father God as our own daddy and to understand that we are the children of his own loins. You know what John the Apostle said in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 1? He said this, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. I encourage you to get this entire series because I've covered so much profound, simple truth that will set you free. I don't want anybody to miss this because knowing God as Father is the reason that the Father sent Jesus to us. Many of us, as I've been sharing, have made it all about Jesus, and in so doing, we've missed the mark. Because even though Jesus is God and we worship Jesus as God, the end is not Jesus, but Jesus came to bring us into relationship with the Father. Don't misunderstand me. We're in relationship with our Messiah, Jesus, forever. We're going to stand before him in heaven and cast our crowns at his feet for coming for us, for saving us, for dying for our sins. And there is no way to the Father but through Jesus. But at the end of the day, it's the Father that sent Jesus to us to bring us into relationship with himself. This is why Paul said in Romans 8, 15, that we've received the spirit of adoption by which we now cry out, Abba, Daddy, Abba, Father, God. God wants you and I, beloved one, to know him as Father. You see, this is the most desperate need that you have. Let's go back historically and kind of put this in perspective. Did you know that the first man, Adam, was actually called a son of God? Adam was called God's son. So we see, for example, in the book of Luke, chapter number three, verse 38, this statement. Speaking of the genealogy, it says that the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, get it now, the son of God. Adam was literally called God's son. God created Adam in his own image, so that God could relate to Adam as a father and a son. Just like we sometimes have children. When I say sometimes, I'm just saying for those of us that have children, and our children are in our own likeness, and we can relate to our children as moms and dads, so too God created Adam in his own image that he could relate to Adam as a son. And so Adam is called the son of God. But what happened? Lucifer, Satan, was in the garden lurking, right? And Satan had already been cast out of heaven. Why was Satan cast out of heaven? Listen to me, because Satan didn't want a father. Satan didn't want God to be his father. Satan wanted to be independent. He wanted to be like God. And so we see, for example, in the book of Isaiah and in the book of Ezekiel, we see here a description of who Satan is and what he was like. So, for example, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, we read this. The Lord here, prophetically referring to the devil, he said this. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. And, of course, north means up. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will make myself like the Most High. And so what was in Satan's heart? He said, I will ascend above the heights and I will make myself like the Most High God. In Ezekiel chapter 28, we find an even more elaborate description of what was in Satan's heart and what caused him to be cast out of heaven down to the earth. Listen, again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Ezekiel 28, Son of man, 
take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, this was a prophetic person that represented a greater prophetic reality. Thus says the Lord God, you had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, the turquoise, the emerald, the gold, and the workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed cherub who covers, and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. By the abundance of your trade, you were eternally filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you out as profane from the mountain of God. And I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up. Here we go now. Pride. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I put you out before kings that they may see you. And so what happened? This one whom pride arose in, Satan, Lucifer, he wanted to become like God. He wanted to rise above God. He wanted no father in his life anymore. He wanted to be the end of all things. He was cast out. He was cast to the earth. And what did he seduce Adam with? He said, if you eat from this tree, right? In the book of Genesis chapter three, Lucifer said to Satan, if you eat from this tree, you will become like God. Isn't that exactly what Satan said in heaven, which caused him to be cast out? So we see now that same spirit that's in Satan that resulted in him being cast out of heaven. We now see him tempting Adam, who was called God's son, with that same spirit. And when Adam fell for it through the deception of his wife, Eve, right? It all started out with the devil who tempted Eve and said to Eve, if you eat from it, you're going to become like God. Then Eve seduced Adam. And then when they ate from it, what happened? Separation took place. Immediately they realized they were naked and they lost, beloved, get it now, a sense of sonship. This is very important because Mankind, humankind was created originally to walk in sonship with God and to know God as father. The book of Corinthians chapter six, God says, come to me and I'll receive you as sons and daughters. So we were created to be the daughters and the sons of God. But when Adam sinned, the sense of sonship was lost. So the father sent Jesus to restore us to that original relationship where we could know God as father. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back in a moment. It's our prayer that today's message has been a blessing to you so far, and we hope that it enriches your walk with Yeshua. If you have a prayer request, we invite you to submit it online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Our team lifts up every individual request before the Lord, and it would be our pleasure, privilege, and honor to pray for you and your family. At Discovering the Jewish Jesus, we are looking for like-minded people who are ready to partner with us. If you're sensing the Lord leading you to offer a financial gift of support, would you please contact us today? Become a monthly partner. Go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or to give a gift of any amount today, just call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. And now here's Rabbi Schneider with the rest of today's message. I want to just take a step back again. I want to show you this in the book of Genesis, chapter number three. Once again, Adam is called in Luke 3, 38, the son of God. But then in Genesis chapter three, verse one through 10, let's just go back historically because I want you to see this is solid, grounded Bible foundational doctrine today. I don't want you just to feel this. I want you to actually see it rooted in the word. Let's see what happened with the fall of men. Genesis three, one through 10. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. 
But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God. Now, this is exactly what the devil did that caused him to get cast out of heaven. So now here he is, he's taking that same personality that got him cast out of heaven and he's bringing mankind into it. What happened when the devil took that root? He was cast out of heaven. So then when even Adam ate of the fruit at the devil's seduction, they were then cast from the Father's presence as well. The devil once again said, when you eat from it, your eyes will be open. You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Think about this. They start out as the son and the daughter of the father. They started out, beloved church, knowing God as their father, being blessed in his presence, experiencing intimacy and fellowship with all their needs being met. And then as soon as they fell for the devil's seduction and ate of the tree, immediately a veil of darkness came over them separation came over them, and now they realized they were naked because they were no longer father conscious. They were now flesh conscious because they were separated from the father. They were not conscious of him anymore because that relationship was broken. Now they were only conscious of themselves, and in that state of only being conscious of themselves, fear set in, and so they ran. And so once again, verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and get it now. And I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And so the cost of sin, get it now, is becoming an orphan. The price for sinning is becoming an orphan. Remember, I've been teaching in the previous broadcast that in the ancient biblical world, if there was no father in the home, even if there was a mother, if there was no father, the daughter or son was considered an orphan. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost relationship with the father. They were separated. Their spiritual connectivity was broken. And now they became conscious only of themselves. They were orphans. But Jesus came and he said to us in John chapter 14, he said, I will not leave you as orphans, but the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will come. And Jesus said, I will not leave you alone. And so Jesus' purpose, remember, is to bring us to the Father. Isn't that what Jesus taught? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. And so Jesus said, I'm going to ascend to the Father, I'm going to present myself to him. He's going to receive me as a sacrifice for your sins. He is then going to release to you the Holy Spirit through me that's going to bring you back into relationship with your Abba Daddy God and your orphan sense of life will be gone and you're going to be restored to relationship. Hallelujah. Once again, bless the holy name with Father God. The Lord said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, as in Adam, all die, so also in Christ, all will be made alive. Jesus came, beloved one, to bring you out of that sense of being an orphan that all humankind has experienced since Adam, to bring you back into a relationship, to restore you into relationship, hallelujah, with the Father. Jesus' purpose, beloved, is to reveal the Father to you. Jesus said in John 17, 26, to the Father, his high priestly prayer, he said to the Father, I have made your name known to them and will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. What name was Yeshua referring to? He was referring to the name Father. You see, the Jewish people already knew God as Yahweh. 
but they didn't know him as father. In fact, when Jesus started calling God father, the religious Jews of his day wanted to stone him to death because they couldn't receive that. They thought it was unholy. They thought it was blasphemous. But the reality is this is exactly the type of relationship that Abba Yahweh wants to have with us. That's why Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5 and says, He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. Listen to this very critical and important word. Jesus had been crucified, okay? They put him in the tomb. They block the tomb. We all know Jesus rose from the dead, the stone rolled away. And the women, they came to the tomb and they found that he wasn't there. But Jesus appeared to the woman. As she saw him, she ran up to grab him. And Jesus said, don't cling to me, he said. For I have not yet ascended to my God and your God, and hear me now, and to my Father and your Father. Jesus said to Mary, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my God and your God, and get it now, and my Father and your Father. Do you know that because of Jesus and in Jesus, God is just as much your Father as he is Jesus' father? Hear what I just said. That in Jesus, you're in Jesus. God chose you in him. And now that you're in Jesus, Father God is just as much your father as he is Jesus' father. Now, don't misunderstand me. I know this is hard to digest, and for some it probably even sounds blasphemous. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Jesus will always be Lord. He's always the only begotten son. But we've been adopted in him, and we're now in Christ. This is what Ephesians chapter 1 tells us. The Father chose us in Jesus. And now that we're in him, the Father is just as much our Father, in a very real sense of the word, as he is Jesus' Father. This is why Jesus prayed in John 17 that the same love that was in him, where did the love come from? It came from the Father, that the same love that is in him, Jesus prayed, would be in us. The Father and Jesus want us to experience the same sense of belonging, the same sense of love from the Father that Jesus experiences. Beloved, doesn't this touch your heart? Doesn't this rejuvenate your faith? Don't you rejoice in knowing what your destiny is? That your destiny is to know the Father? When you know that you're born of God's Spirit, and in being born of His Spirit, you become His daughter or His son, and that the Father loves you as His own child, Behold what manner of love the Father has given to you, that you are called a child of God, that you're a son or a daughter, and that the same fierce love that the Father loves Jesus with is toward you. When you get a revelation of this and understand where you're going, that you're going into the fullness of this revelation, this experience, beloved, it will change your life. It will free you to run the race. When you get a sense, beloved one, of how loved you are and of your identity by knowing who you are, not the outer man, not how much money you have in the bank, not what car you have or what job you have, not how fat or skinny you are, not how beautiful you are in the flesh. All that is passing away. We all age. All our skin begins to get old. No, it's not the outer man. It's not the circumstantial things that are passing away. I'm talking about what's inside you. When you realize that the real you is a son or a daughter of God and that God loves you and he's your daddy, when you get a hold of this, beloved one, and I'm telling you, it will bring you into freedom. Father, right now in Yeshua's name, I bless every daughter and every son and every son and every daughter that's under the sound of my voice right now. I ask you, Daddy, reveal your love to each and every son and daughter under the sound of my voice right now. Reveal to them, Daddy, how much you love them and who they are to you, Father, as a son and a daughter in Jesus' name. Amen. Just like Rabbi prayed, Father God, He loves you. And you're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Our Bible teacher is Rabbi Schneider, and we've been on a journey to answer a pivotal question. Who is the Father? 
I hope that you've really been encouraged during today's lesson. And did you know that we're able to broadcast these biblically sound and inspiring messages from Rabbi because of your support? Without your engagement on our social media platforms, your prayers, and your generous financial gifts, we couldn't do what we do. We're in this together, and your faithfulness to discovering the Jewish Jesus, it really is a testament to our collective journey in sharing the gospel with the whole world. And now, let's turn things back over to Rabbi for just a moment. In the Gospel of John chapter 6, we read the story of how the 5,000 that had followed Jesus were hungry and needed something to eat. They began to ask, well, what do we have to feed so many? One of the disciples said, well, one young lad here has five loaves and two fish. Jesus said, bring them to me. Yeshua blessed the five loaves and the two fish. Supernaturally, all 5,000 were fed and there was even food left over. Beloved, I believe that when you and I give to Jesus what we have, he supernaturally multiplies it. Let's be faithful to him with our finances. He has promised that what we give to him would come back to us, press down good measure and running over into our lives. If the Lord is feeding you through discovering the Jewish Jesus, I would encourage you, present a financial offering to him through this ministry. I am confident, beloved, by the faith of God's word that you're going to be blessed as a result of obedience to him. This is Rabbi Schneider. God bless you. I love you and shalom. If the Lord is prompting you to give a one-time gift to this ministry today or to become a monthly partner with us, I want to encourage you to please follow the Father's leading. You can faithfully give online at Discover the Jewish Jesus.com. Or if it's easier, just call us at 800 777 7835. The number once again is 800 777 7835. Your financial gifts, they help us spread the good news and the message of Messiah, not only to people in your local listening area, but all across the world to those who are feeling lonely and lost and orphaned. In fact, we're currently broadcasting in over 1.5 million homes in Israel with cable television. And we're devoted to sharing these messages all over the Middle East as well. And as our way of saying thank you for your faithful gifts, we'll send you an engaging and insightful newsletter from Rabbi that's prepared each month, especially for listeners just like you. Your financial gifts and prayers for Rabbi Schneider, his wife, Cynthia, and the whole Discovering the Jewish Jesus team, they really make a difference. So thank you, thank you for standing with us. And then don't forget, we're pleased to send a free gift to you just for getting in touch with us today. Rabbi would love for you to start each day walking with a fresh revelation of God's word that'll lead you into victory this year. You can request a free copy of a guide to hearing God's voice when you go to myfreegift.com forward slash hearing. Now let's wrap up Rabbi Schneider's message with a special blessing. What I love about the ironic blessing is that it did not originate with man. The words actually proceeded from the very essence of God himself. The blessing comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. So listen to these words and receive the blessing of the Lord into your life today. Yahweh <laughs> Yair Yahweh Panavelecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panavelecha Veasim Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance. And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. 
I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Be sure to join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider explains experiencing God as the Father. That's Wednesday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.